Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my video. Today, uh, for this brew day, we're doing a double IPA based off of a clone recipe for Russian Rivers Pliny the Elder. I kind of simplified it a little bit, changed up the hops, uh, made it a little bit cheaper to brew. Um, here I'm brewing on the Clawhammer Supply 5 gallon brew in a bag system. Use a 120 volt outlet, uh, which is pretty much your standard outlet in any home. And uh, real convenient. But anyway, so I'm starting with my reverse osmosis water that I get from a grocery store near my house. A lot of you guys have probably seen those machines at the front of the grocery store. Super convenient, um, cheap. I like the way the beer comes out with the water. I know you lose a lot of those minerals when brewing, so you might have to play around with your water. I find that just using the water alone, the beer comes out great. I have no complaint. So, start with that. I think we started with around 8 gallons of water, um, which is kind of what I want to be at when I boil. But with sparge water, we'll be able to make sure that we're still there. So, I'm setting up my mash temperature right now. We're going to mash at 155. Now, there's like a plus or minus five degree difference between the controller and the actual water temp. So if you guys brew on this system or are interested in brewing the system you want, you might want to kind of just check that on your first or second brew and just, you know, just make sure your, your temperatures are accurate. So I have my pumps hooked up. I like to circulate the water while I'm getting the mash temp. Just to make sure that the water's even from top to bottom. So now that we're at mash temp at the 155, I'm um, going to go ahead and add my my basket here. It's a wire mesh basket. It just replaces the old bag from the brew in the bag system. Uh, makes it so much better than the than the bag system. Works great. So add that. Circulate my my pump again while I go get my uh, my grains. So the grain bill here. We're going to be using 13 pounds of Turo, one pound of Crystal 45. Now Crystal 45 is going to add a little bit of that that dark caramel color. Um, hopefully add some maltiness. To the uh, to the finished product, so I'm brewing. I'm brewing by myself today. I didn't have a cameraman. I didn't have an extra set of hands. I like to usually have somebody stir this in while I'm while I'm adding it. So you notice I kind of add a little bit, stir it, add a little bit, stir it again, just to make sure I get all those clumps out. Let's try and get as much of that sugar as I can. All right, all the greens are in. This is kind of the consistency I like to do my mash at. Um, I like to be real liquidy. Uh, I don't like to be too thick. I don't know if there's any scientific proof, um, you know, to having it certain consistency or not. But I, I feel that this is going to be the best way to kind of extract a lot of those sugars and, and hopefully have a lot less clumps with all that green in there. But totally preference. I think, I think this is the end of my, my mash right here. Yeah, so I have these little cleats. You're going to see me lift this this um, basket out, and it's going to sit on these cleats on top of the kettle, and I'll let it kind of just kind of strain off into the kettle while I bring my, my temperature up to boil temps. That's also when I'm going to sparge. Now, I don't show the sparging in this video, but I like to sparge with water at the same temperature that I mashed at, so I'll bring it up to like 155. And I'll just use enough to bring it back up to that 8 gallons that I wanted to start with for my boil. With two people, this is a lot easier when you add these cleats. That um, Depending on how big your cream bill is, it can be a little bit heavy. Um, trying to do it one-handed like I'm doing here. Luckily, I like to keep my kettle a little bit lower. I don't keep it at like counter level. If it was above your waist, that might be kind of difficult to do to lift it over that the height of that kettle. All right, so now what I'm showing you here is you can either do automatic or manual um, to bring up your te your temperature to boil. So 212 is going to be your boil temp. You can either set it to the 212, which mine never actually gets there. It'll be like 207, but it'll still start boiling. Or you can just um, hold the left arrow over button for two or three seconds. And it'll switch over to this manual mode. So there you see 100% efficiency. It'll just crank that uh, that heating element up and just let it get as hot as you can so that's usually what I end up doing now if there's any doubt that a 120 single heating element can bring 8 gallons of water up to a boil you'll see here that definitely doesn't no problem now 
I can't say there not necessarily there's no problem. If you try and do that without the lid on, you might run into a little bit of trouble. It might take a little bit longer. It might not even get to a boil. Um, but with this hop spider that I'm adding in here, it kind of leaves like a little bit of a, a crack for the, that steam to evaporate. And I think it's like a bunch of sulfides that I think that kind of evaporate out there. I don't know if I don't know if that's true or not or accurate. You guys can put in the comment section below and let me know. So first hop addition is going to be three ounces of CTZ. CTZ is um, one of the hops that are used in the clone recipe. So at the beginning of our 90 minute boil, I'm going to add those in. And CTZ we're also going to be using in the dry hopping. I'm going to use one ounce of CTZ along with one ounce of Chinook and one ounce of Centennial after the first week of fermentation. And then when I transfer it over to the second week of fermentation, I'm going to dry hop it on the fourth week, which is going to be with one ounce Chinook, one ounce Amarillo. So after, after the three ounces of CTZ at the 45 minute mark, I'm going to add one more ounce of CTZ. Which you can see right here. So, this, so we're halfway through the boil already. You see we still got a nice good boil going. When I add the hops to the hop spider, I like to kind of submerge it and swish it around a little bit and make sure all those hops get submerged in it. Um, you'll see a lot of times they'll float to the top. I probably should have filmed a little bit, a little bit better in the hop spider, but um, but if you guys use one, you can see. I know there's a lot of people are against hop spiders, but to keep this beer clean, um, I'm using one. So here we have a 30 minute, um, or 30 minutes left in the boil edition of one ounce Chinook. Adding that in, and then our next hops won't be till flame out. All right, now we're coming down to the last 10 minutes of our boil. So I have my plate chiller hooked up, my hose is hooked up. Um, when I do that, you can see I kind of lost that boil. Um, circulating through those hoses, you're going to lose a little bit of temperature on there. It will get back up to a boil, but for those last 10 minutes, you want to circulate that boiling water through the pump, through the plate chiller. Make sure that there's if there's anything in there, it kind of sanitizes it and isn't going to isn't going to mess up your your finished product. Here I'm just kind of showing my, my runoff, hot water runoff. Now I don't waste it all in the grass, I just waste the first bit of it because it's scorching hot when it comes out and then I'll usually collect the rest from my star stand. Also at 10 minutes we're going to add our Warflock tablet. Like I said before, I want to get this beer as clean as possible. So that's going to help do the trick right there. One Warflock tablet. Something I did on my last brew. Um, that I just recently started doing is adding this corn sugar. The homebrew shop sells it in eight ounces, I think for like two dollars. I don't really know how much it ups my ABV, but um, I don't know, I feel like it, it's gotta do something. So for two bucks, I add it in. Why not? More alcohol, the better. If I had somebody there with me, I'd, I'd have somebody stirring while I was adding this. Um, I add it towards the end because I don't want to get any kind of like burnt sugar flavor. In the finished product I don't know if I necessarily would but um, here I have the the pump circulating in the back so I kind of got it moving around and I think it's more like a powdered sugar consistency so it kind of dissolves it up all right so we have flame out you see I just killed the heating element last two hop additions um, are gonna be our centennial and our Chinook one ounce of each so I'll add that in and right after I add that in then we're gonna start dropping our, our temperature down turning on the um, the water for the plate chiller and I like to bring my temp, my wart temp down to around 90 degrees before I, before I put it into my fermenter. So here we're at 189. You'll see that that temperature will drop pretty quick um, with the uh, with the plate chiller run. I like the plate chiller better than the immersion chiller. Um, it's definitely a lot more compact, easier to store. If you're if you're tight on space like I am in a, in a little townhome, and uh, I just think it works better. I don't know. I might do a video. I still have my immersion chiller, so I might do a video to see comparing the two. But um, I love my plate chiller. So we're at 89 degrees, so just under 90 degrees. So now I'm ready to go ahead and pitch this into my fermenter. Now I'm not going to pitch the yeast right away. Um, pit, pitching temps I like to get around more like that 70 degrees. I'm going to be using safe level five. So I think my temperature range is between 65 and 75 degrees. So 
here I'm adding it in. You'll notice I hold the hose up pretty high and kind of let that uh, let that water fall in um, to kind of just oxygenate it all and get it ready for the yeast. Also, if you if you look closely, you'll see my big mouth bubblers kind of slanted there. That was from a previous brew. I um, I was kind of in a rush and I had to I had to put some hot wort in there and it kind of melted it a little bit. So don't do that. I noticed later on the on the side of the big mouth bubble it says um, keep temperatures below 140. So I definitely was above 140 when I did that. Stupid mistake. So don't do what I did. You see the foam up on the top of there too. That's from the star sand from Sand Don't worry about that foam if you guys are new to brewing. And we're gonna get our original gravity reading, and it's gonna be 1.052. So hopefully we have a good fermentation. Thanks for watching. Please remember to comment, like, and subscribe.